Part three of the Creative Mind by Ernest Shirtliff Holmes. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Be expectant. Expect the best to happen. Don't sit around waiting for trouble. Have absolutely nothing to do with it. It is no part of the divine plan. It is an illusion of the material sense. One who has learned to trust will not be surprised, even when he finds things coming from the most unexpected sources. All things are man's to use, and then let go of. What more can we ask? We want nothing that we have to keep. Things are to use, not to hold. Expect that everything is to come your way. Be content and cheerful if you wish to attract from out the store of the infinite. Open up your whole consciousness to the greater possibilities of life. Line up with the big things. When you speak the word, expect it to happen. Know that it must be as you say. This will not be fooling yourself. It will simply be using the law as it is meant to be used. Expanding Our Thought all things come to us through the use of our thought. If we have a small concept of life, we will always be doing small things. First in the creative series is the word, but the word carries us no further than our consciousness back of it. Unless we are constantly expanding our thought, we are not growing. Growth is the law of life, and it is necessary. We cannot stand still. If you want to do a new thing, Get a new thought, and then you will have the power of attraction, which has the possibility of drawing to you the circumstances which will make for the fulfillment of your desires. Get over the old idea of limitation. Overcome all precedents and set yourself in the new order of things. If you want to build a railroad, you will never do it unless you get over the idea that the most you can hope for in life is to sell peanuts. Let the people sell peanuts for a living who think in the terms of peanuts. Get out of the rut. God has created you for a glorious future. Dare to fling out into mind the greater assurances about yourself. The Power of a Treatment A treatment has as much power as we put into the word which we speak when we are giving it. This does not mean screwing up our mind or using our willpower or using force from the material standpoint. It means simply knowing that what we say will be done unto us of a power which can do anything that is given it to do. We must know that our word breaks down every material law and sets the patient free to express God. We must know that the word would endure even though all else should fail. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will accomplish. In calm confidence and perfect faith, speak and wait upon the perfect law, Get that mental attitude that never wavers. Be sure and it will be done. Repeating the treatment. One treatment would heal anything if it were not for the fact that people are constantly receiving false suggestions from the outer life. As it stands now, we should treat until we get results, always expecting that it will happen at once. Every treatment should be complete, and at the close we should always realize that it is done. The word spoken once from the mind that knows is immediately taken up by the mind in which we live, and this mind begins to create around the word, which is the seed, the thing of thought. We must speak that word with authority. There can be no wondering if it's going to work. When we plant a seed in the ground and water and care for it, we never doubt but a plant will spring into being. So it is with the word. It is acted upon by some power which we do not see, but that power is present, there is no doubt, since all who go about it get results. As Thomas Edison says of electricity, It is, use it. So we say of mind, it is, use it. Always remember that your every thought is the way you are treating, since it is the way that you are thinking. Impersonal Healing the very presence of one that understands the truth will have a great power of healing. The reason for this is that we are all in mind, and we have with us at all times our thought. And since all manifestation is the result of mind in action, and we are thinking beings and are always causing mind to act, the very presence of our thought will have some power to act upon whatever we are thinking about. We are dealing with the power which in itself is limitless. We limit it, and so it cannot become to us the bigger thing. Of itself the power is the same that made the worlds, and it cannot realize any sense of limitation. 
they could not enter in because of their unbelief and because they limited the holy one of israel stop limiting things things are as big as we make them no more no less there is room at the top get on top of everything and dare to dominate the earth all things are given us to use make use of them everything is limitless and we must see the truth that the fault is not in the law but in ourselves when we fail not with god but with man dare 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 think of the bigness of things in the universe think of the number of grains of sand the profusion of all life and never again limit anything all is yours to use jesus would never have become the christ unless he had had the courage to say behold i am he you will never attain until in some degree you are able to say the same thing of yourself we must learn to reach out and take what is meant for us the greater life the all good people say yes but how do you do it simply know that god makes things out of himself by speaking the word and that in your own life you can do the same all people can think and all people can speak at least mentally this is all that you need to begin on the word is at the center of all creation and is first cause the starting point of all that you see the word is in your own mouth and all that you have to do is to speak it the trouble is that we are speaking the word and in the next breath we are denying its power by seeing something that contradicts it if the word is the way that god creates it is the right way if it works for god shall it not work for us as yet our word is more or less imperfect but more and more it will become perfect and so the outer condition will be brought up to the inner word all words have as much power as we put into them when we speak the word is already in our own mouths that word is all that you will ever need to bring happiness health and success to you do you wish to live in a perfect world peopled with friends who love you surrounded by all that is beautiful and pleasing do you wish to have the good things of life there is but one way and that way is as sure as the sun shines forget all else and think only upon what you want control all thought that denies the real and as the mist disappears before the sun so shall all adversity melt before the shining radiance of your own exalted thought the prodigal son remained a prodigal only so long as he chose to do so when the thought came to him to return he was greeted by the father with outstretched hands so shall we find that when we turn to that world which is perfect there will be something that will turn with us and we shall behold the new heaven and the new earth not in some far-off place somewhere beyond the clouds but here and now shall we become free we must do away with all that hinders the true growth all little thoughts that hinder us from becoming human strife comes from the thought that there is not enough to go around forget it we cannot use even what we see and what we do not see is infinite you will rob no one by becoming prosperous and the laws that underlie this state of being are simple and easy to understand and not hard to attain for the one who is willing to let go of the negative state of being prosperity here are a few simple rules for prosperity that are as sure of working as that water is sure to be wet first remember that nothing happens by chance all is law and all is order you create your own laws every time you think there is something call it what you will but there is a power around you that knows and that understands all things this power works like the soil it receives the seed of your thought and at once begins to operate upon it it will receive whatever you give to it and will create for you and throw back at you whatever you think into it this means that the practitioner should be very careful how he is thinking at all times not alone in the moments of the deeper silence are we treating our patients but perhaps more than this we are treating them in an impersonal way at all times when we take a patient into our thought for a treatment there will be a constant stream of consciousness flowing out to him during all the time that he is in our care we should be very careful of our thoughts as we realize the deep truths of mental action and reaction what is the spiritual mind what is true spirituality many people have asked this and as many have answered it 
i do not pretend to know more about this all-important topic than others but to the thinking person who has come to realize that all is love yet at the same time all is governed by law there must be a different answer given than the one we ordinarily hear the average religious person thinks that spirituality must manifest in some unnatural way such as giving up all personal pleasure and becoming resigned to whatever happens that we must give up most of what life holds here that in some far-off future perhaps we may attain this is not the case with the man jesus we have more accounts of his being at feasts and weddings and similar gatherings than at other places his first miracle was performed at a wedding feast and we must remember that here he even turned water into wine for the pleasure of the guests of the house perhaps we have made a mistake about what true spirituality means other people think we must live some kind of an excluded life in order to obtain perhaps this may be true of the weak ones but what of the world what of the busy street is it not to be saved also jesus spent much time with the common people as well as with the rich and it is certain that he also spent much time alone with the spirit what is the spirit anyway we all answer why of course it is god where is the spirit it is present at all times and in all places true spirituality must simply mean coming to realize the presence of this spirit it must be coming to rely upon it more than anything else the one then who is the most spiritual is simply the one who relies the most that's all no matter where he is he must rely he must trust he must believe we do not have to give up anything but negative thought and act we do not want to do anything that contradicts the forward march of the unfoldment of the spirit so all that we think and do must be in line with that which is right but who shall say what is and what is not right remember this for ever only your own soul can say what is right and what is wrong to thine own self be true and it shall follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man look to no one for guidance this is the blind leading the blind the almighty has put the truth in to your own soul look there and there alone for it many people seem to think that for a man to look spiritual he must have no color in his face have some kind of far-away truth he must be peculiar either in looks or in the way he dresses to one who knows the truth both praise and blame sound alike but from the human standpoint at least a person cannot help being amused at the way in which the world judges true spirituality my idea of true spirituality is that a man should live a perfectly normal life entering into and enjoying all in life that is clean and good he should place himself absolutely under divine guidance other than this he will seem just like other people neither better nor worse get over all kinds of unnatural thought and remember that all is good neither criticize nor condemn people or things you are spiritual in so far as you trust in the spirit at all times in all places under all conditions in order to do this you do not have to seclude yourself from the world to do so is an open confession of your own weakness and lack there are moments when it is best to be alone with the power from these moments we gather strength to keep that strength to ourselves is pure selfishness walk talk live with the human race hand in hand with all people and unified with all events live and love and learn be natural and normal if you seek to enter some other way it must be done over again for no one lives or dies unto himself but unto all people the church of god the church of god is not built with hands it is eternal in the heavens it is not lighted with candles its dome is heaven and it is lighted by the stars of god's illumined thought and each member in its separate star shall draw the thing as he sees it for the god of things as they are here all people recognize the god within their own souls and ask for and see no other god when you can look upon all creation as the perfect work of a perfect god you will become a member of this church i doubt very much if the church universal admits members from the church individual when you can see in the saint and the sinner one and the same person when you can realize that the one who kneels before the altar and the one who lies drunk in the street is the same one when you can love the one as much as you do the other no doubt you will be able to qualify 
as it is now we have too many preachers who do not understand that have no purpose too many prayers too many creeds too many teachers that have no message too many churches too many learned people and too few thinkers the kingdom of heaven cometh not by observation it is the still small voice within the soul that speaks the expanded thought will never wish to join or be joined to nothing human can contain it it feels the limitation of form and ceremony and longs for the freedom of the spirit the great out of doors the great god of everywhere alone in the desert the forest or by the restless ocean looking up at the stars man breathes forth these words with only my maker and me the path to prosperity the healing of conditions is no different from other healing all healing is the constructive use of a mental law which the world is gradually beginning to understand something of again we must reiterate the principle of all life we are surrounded by a thinking medium from which all things come we think into it it does the rest since we are thinking beings and cannot stop thinking and since creative mind receives our thought and cannot stop creating it must always be making something for us what it will make depends absolutely and only upon what we are thinking and what we will attract will depend entirely upon our holding thought to the complete exclusion of all that would contradict it it is not enough that we should sit down and say i am one with infinite life this must mean more than mere words it must be felt it must become an embodiment of a positive mental attitude it is not claiming something to be true which is going to happen it is not sending out an aspiration or a desire or a supplication or a prayer it must be the embodiment of that which knows that now it is this is more than holding a thought our ability to attract will depend upon the largeness of our thought as we feel that it flows out into a great universal creative power we are dealing with the form in thought and not with the form in matter we have learned that when we get the true form in thought and permeate it with the spirit of belief we will see the thought made flesh without any further effort on our part thought can attract us only to that which we first mentally embody we cannot attract to ourselves that which we are not we can attract in the outer only that which we have first completely mentally embodied within that which has become a part of our mental makeup a part of our inner understanding a man going into business will attract to himself that which he thinks about the most if he is a barber he will attract people who want to be shaved or have their hair cut if he sells shoes he will attract people who want to buy shoes so it is with everything we will not only do this but we will also attract as much of anything as we mentally embody this is apt to be overlooked in the study of metaphysics it is not enough to say that we attract what we think we become what we think and what we become we will attract do not become merely sentimental about this your life is governed by more than a sentiment it is governed by law something that cannot be broken something that picks up every mental attitude and does something with it this fundamental proposition of the law should then work out into our conditions always remember that it does just as we think it does not argue it simply does the thing as we think it now how are we thinking never ask a patient how he is feeling ask how are you thinking today this is the only thing that matters how are we thinking about life and our conditions are we receiving the race suggestion are we saying that there is not enough to go around if we are saying this it is our belief and there is something that will see that it becomes a part of our expression most people through ignorance of the higher laws of their being are suffering from the thoughts imposed upon them from a negative and doubtful world we who are claiming the use of the greater law must emancipate ourselves from all sense of limitation we are not to be governed by the outer confusion but by the inner realization we are to judge life not from the way that things in the past have been done but from the way that the spirit does things the way of the spirit again let us say that the spirit creates by becoming the thing that it thinks there is no other possible way in which it could work since it is all and there is no other the thought of opposing forces never enters into its mental working 
when we are judging from the outer we are not working in line with the power that we should be using we must come to see that there is only one power and that we are touching it at all points for there is not a power of poverty and a power of prosperity there is the one becoming the many it makes and it unmakes that a higher form may appear to express through it all that is not in line with its forward movement will soon pass away for it recognizes no opposite as far as we are concerned what we are and what we are to become depends only upon what we are thinking for this is the way that we are using creative power the sooner we get away from the thought that we have to create the sooner we will be able to work in line with the spirit always man uses he never creates anything the united intelligence of the human race could not make a single rosebud it does not know enough but our slightest thought adrift in mind causes the same power that makes all things to create for us the great error of the race is and always has been that men have thought to give a physical reason for things when that reason has not answered the problem of life they have sought out some other reason just as physical the fact that they are all wrong is shown that in every generation has found a different reason when truth is found it will also be found that it never changes to suit the whim of the human fancy this is proven by the fact that whatever of the real truth the race has discovered has never been changed the truth that was revealed to the prophets of old has never changed it is the same today as it was thousands of years ago whoever touches truth no matter in what generation will always get the same answer the great truth that was revealed from moses to the time of jesus is the same truth that is still revealed to all who will accept it it is simply this we are now living in a spiritual universe governed by mental laws of cause and effect moses saw it mostly from the standpoint of the law of cause and effect an eye for an eye what does this mean it means as jesus said as a man sows so shall he reap moses saw the law jesus saw not only the law i am not come to destroy but to fulfill but he saw behind the law the reason for it and revealed behind all law the great lawgiver a god of love working out the great inner concepts of his own being in harmony and in beauty filled with peace causing the sun to shine alike upon the just and the unjust jesus did not try to overcome the use of law he understood all law and he well knew that all law was at his command he did not break the law he fulfilled it so we must find that all is at our command through these same laws the man who understands law and complies with it will have no difficulty in demonstrating that it is as true for him as it ever was for any one else what then are the laws underlying prosperity the first is this and we must not try to escape it thou shalt have no other gods before me this me is spirit we are then to trust only in the activity of spirit for what we need but the world will say human things come through human agencies this may be true but we must realize that the power we are dealing with also has within its own mind all people and all things we do not have to treat people what we have to do is to embody principle principle may use people but that is no part of our responsibility ultimately all is spirit and spirit which is the beginning is also the end of all manifestation i am the alpha and the omega our life then is to be governed by spirit we need look no further it will do for us all that we will ever ask provided we believe why then has it not done so the answer is that it has already been done so but we have not received it the spirit may offer but we must accept the gift before it can be made behold i stand at the door and knock we must understand that this receiving is a mental process it is one of mentally taking the way then that we are using our mind through our thought is the way that we are treating ourselves for prosperity so simple and yet we have not understood it if a man says i have not he will not receive if he says i have he will receive to those who have shall be given and to those who have not shall be taken away even that which they have 
this is a veiled statement of the law of cause and effect when you send out into mind the thought that you have not it accepts the idea and takes away from you that which you have reverse the process and say i have and it will at once set to work to create for you even more than you now possess you will readily see then that you are not dealing with two powers but with one and that it operates through your own thought doing unto all even as they believe the level of consciousness since all is mind and it is done unto us as we mentally think all life is simply a law of thought activity of consciousness in our life the power flows through us if we provide a big receptivity it will do a big thing if on the other hand we only believe in a small way the activity must be a small one the spirit can do for us only what it can do through us unless we are able to provide the consciousness it cannot make the gift few people have a great consciousness and this explains why so few excel the power behind all things of itself is without limit it is all power in us it has to become what we make it we carry within our own soul the key to all expression but few enter in the door is not seen with the physical eye and as yet but few have gained the ability to see the majority merely look realizing then that while the power is limitless it must become operative through our own thought we shall see that what we need is not some greater power but that what we really need is a greater consciousness a deeper realization of life a grander concept of being we must unify ourselves with the great whole the man who dares to fling his thought out into universal intelligence with the positive assurance of one who knows and dares to claim all there is will find that it will be done god will honor his request on the other hand the one who fears to speak lest god will smite will find himself smitten of the law not because god is angry but because it is done as he believes we have a right to have and should expect to have in this world all that will make for the comfort and for the luxuries of life what matter how much we have if we rob no other soul to get it shall not the power that so lavishly spreads itself out into nature give to us its highest expression all that we can ask we dishonor god when we claim less than all until we can expand our thought so that we shall be able to say also i am we need not expect to get great results the soul knows that its own divinity is the great soul before it all else must bend to it all else must gravitate enlarge your thought process away with the little personal thoughts of things and dare to think in universal terms about all things the universe is running over with good it is for you but you must believe and then take it do you dare to believe that your own word is invincible when you speak it how do you feel is it limitless is it all power is all power given to you in heaven and on earth are you the one with the only power that there is until you can say yes to all these questions and not simply believe them but know them you cannot hope to attain it is useless in making demonstrations to beg for things as well beg that water should be wet or that fire should be hot things are we must take them your word has only the power that you put into it no more and no less we are all held accountable for every word that we speak because all is the action and the reaction of mind man is his own heaven and his own hell we start a new enterprise and wonder what the chances of success are have we realized that the outer is simply the inner manifested when we go to a new place we shall find there only what we have taken with us if we have taken success we will find success if on the other hand we have taken failure we will find failure this is the law none can avoid it none need try every living soul is a law unto his own life there is no law but my own soul shall set nothing can come upon the path of the soul but that thing that the soul attracts practice for prosperity prosperity is in our own hands to do with as we will but we will never reach it until we learn to control our thought we must see only what we want and never allow the other things to enter if we wish activity we must be active in our thought we must see activity and speak it into everything that we do 
the spoken word shall bring it to pass we speak the word it is brought to pass of the power that we speak it into we can only speak the word that we understand the activity will correspond to our inner concepts if they are large the results will be large the thing to do is to unify ourselves with all the biggest ideas that we can compass, and realizing that our ideas govern our power of attraction, we should be constantly enlarging within ourselves. We must realize our at one with all power and know that our word will bring it to pass. We speak the word, it is brought to pass. As consciousness grows, it will manifest in enlarged opportunities and in a greater field of action. Most people think in the terms of universal powers. Feel that you are surrounded by all the power that there is when you speak and never doubt but that what you will say will spring into being. We should speak right out into mind all that we desire and believe that it will be done unto us. Never take the time to listen to those who doubt. We observe that their philosophy has done but little to save the world or themselves. Here again, let the dead bury the dead and see to it that you maintain in your own thought what you want, letting go of all else. Think only what you want to happen, and never let yourself get mentally lazy and sluggish, taking on the suggestions of poverty and limitation. See yourself as being in the position that you desire, mentally dwell upon it, and then speak with perfect assurance that it is done, and then forget it and trust in the law. This will answer all needs. If you want to do this for someone else, all that you will need to do is to think of them and go through the same process of mind action. You will be sending out the truth for them, and mind being always active will not contradict what you have said. Remember that you cannot hope to get results unless you keep the one idea and do not mix your thoughts in your mind. It is all yours, but you must take it. The taking is always a mental process. It is believing absolutely this is divine principle conclusion principle itself is simplicity yet it is infinite it is infinite mind and manifestation of mind we live in a spiritual universe governed through thought or the word which first becomes law this law creates what we call matter jesus christ discerned the truth about spiritual principles more than any other man who ever lived and he proclaimed the eternal reign of law and understanding absolute, complete, perfect. He found that law to be operative through his own thought and the power of his own word. And when you and I shall cease looking outside ourselves to any person, and shall realize that whatever truth and whatever power we shall have must flow through us. When we begin to interpret our own natures, we shall begin to understand God and law and life, and not until then. We live and move and have our being in what we call an infinite mind, an infinite creative mind, also infinitely receptive, operative, omnipotent, and all-knowing. And we have learned that this mind presses against us on all sides, flows through us, and becomes operative through our thinking. The human race, ignorant of the laws of this mind, ignorant of the power of its own thought, has through its ignorance misused and abused the creative power of its thought, and brought upon itself the thing it feared. This is true because all thought is law, and all law is mind in action, and the word which you speak today is the law which shall govern your life tomorrow, as the word which you spoke, ignorantly or innocently, consciously or unconsciously yesterday, is absolutely governing your life today. As metaphysicians, then, we are not dealing with a material, nor denying a manifest universe, but we are claiming that the manifestation is the result of the inner activity of the mind, and if we wish for a definite manifestation, we must produce a definite inner activity. You and I, then, are not dealing with conditions, but with mental and spiritual law. We are dealing with the power of thought, the power of mind, and the more spiritual the thought, the higher the manifestation. The more our reliance on what we call God, the greater the power. It is the new education because it strips all the faults from the old belief and reveals the individual. It is the new age because as sure as God is, it will usher in and express the perfect life, the revelation of this truth, and our ability to use it. And it is your own fault when you know this and do not prove it. 
if knowing the infinite power flowing through you you still remain sick and unhappy miserable and poor my friend it is your own fault do not blame god do not blame man and do not say it's of the devil it's your own fault every time you say i am you are recognizing the eternal infinite presence of omnipotent power within yourself which is god operating through your thought and that is why you bring upon yourself the thing you fear and why you bring to yourself the thing you want the day when fifty one per cent of your thinking is health life and power that fifty one per cent will swallow up erase kill out the rest the day you as an individual through fifty one per cent of your thought pass beyond the perception of limitation is the day that you will draw out of the universe everything you desire poverty will desert you and you will be emancipated forever the day that your thought is fifty one per cent happiness is the day that misery shall depart and never return is it not then worth your time and your effort and should it not be the greatest purpose in the life of any awakened soul so to depict this principle as to emancipate himself the way can be shown but each individual must himself walk the way we are so bound by suggestion and hypnotized by false belief so entangled by the chaotic thinking of the world thinking which is based upon the principle of a dual mind that we become confused and are not ourselves wake up your word is all-powerful your consciousness is one with omnipotence your thought is infinite your destiny is eternal and your home is everlasting heaven realize the truth i am living in a perfect universe it always was perfect and always will be perfect there never was a mistake made there are no mistakes being made and there never will be i live in the great and eternal universe of perfection from cause to effect from beginning to end and the world is all right and i know it majestic and calm waiting with eternal and divine patience the great principle of life is ready to give to us all that it has and while we listen and wait we will cast from us everything that hinders its complete expression through us we will let go of all struggle and all strife and be at peace with life perfect peace to the soul as we rest in the realization of our unity with all that there is was or ever will be one with the infinite mind all the power of the spirit is working through our thought as we believe and receive now we will ask for and take that thing which we desire it is done it is complete now and forever perfect life perfect healing perfect harmony divine guidance infinite strength and joy forever end of part three part four of creative mind by ernest shirtliff holmes this librivox recording is in the public domain questions and answers what is the truth the truth is that which is it is all that is as there cannot be something and nothing so the truth being that which is must at the same time be all that there is where is the truth if the truth is all it must be everywhere being all there is no other substance to divide it with being undivided it is everywhere present all truth which means all power must be present at all points or at any given point at any and all times has the truth changed a substance cannot change unless there is something for it to change into since the truth is all it cannot change for there is no other thing for it to change into whatever is the truth then has never changed is the truth or that which is one or many it must be one since it is all is the truth conscious yes man is conscious he could not be so unless truth or life were conscious man's self-consciousness proves the self-consciousness of life or truth or spirit like produces like what comes out of life everything that is comes out of life if life is all then it follows that all that is is some form of life how does life make things being all it must make things out of itself it must operate upon itself through itself and out of itself must make all that is made being conscious it must know that it is doing this what would we call this inner movement of life 
the inner movement of life or consciousness we would call thought or the self-knowing of life or spirit then the universe and all that is a part of it comes from thought yes everything comes from thought do we not see a visible world that seems to change and if we do how is it that it could come from something that never changes yes we do see a changing world but back of it is a changeless substance the thing that changes is the thought or form the substance from which this form comes never changes it is one and undivided and takes form through thought in all things we prove this when we resolve all things into one source all material things so called can be reduced into formless substance the sole activity of which must be thought or the movement of intelligence upon itself what causes form to change the intelligence behind it is there nothing in the universe then but life thought and form these are all if this is true what is physical law physical law is simply the result of the inner movement of life if things and laws are the result of the inner movement of life then does it not follow that thoughts are things yes all things are simply thought forms how long does thought last as form as long as the thought is held in life or mind does the thought of life mind or good ever change from all that we can know the thought of god seems to change that is planets change take form and again become formless when we realize that all this can take place without ever changing the substance behind it we see no reason why god's thought could not change and ever build up a higher form indeed this is one of the teachings of ancient wisdom that while reality never changes the form that it takes is ever changing what is man's place in the creative order man is a thinking center in mind reproducing in a smaller scale all that there is in the universe does this not make man's thought creative in a certain sense it does what we call creation is not making something out of nothing but it is thought taking form and as man thinks and as thought must take form then it must follow that man's thought must take form in mind and so become creative what is man's thought it is the activity of that something within that can say i am what is the difference between god and man the very fact that man can say i am proves that he is since he is he must be made out of life and must be some part of all that there is this being so man must be a part of god's consciousness the difference would be in degree only he must be as much of life as he recognizes himself to be is all of man's thought creative yes all or none if one thought produces then all must if this is true how is it that man seems to be so limited because he has thought limitation and thoughts are things that will always make the thing thought of in reality the very fact that man's thought can limit him also proves that it could free him from all limitation by simply changing his thought but why is man so made that he can think two ways this is a question that can be answered only in one way unless a man can think as he wants to think he would not be a man at all but simply a piece of mechanism man is an individual and that means self-choice backed by a power that will produce the thing chosen in discovering himself man chooses many things uses them and passes to a higher choice ever ascending in the scale of being as fast as he chooses he experiences that thing which he thinks about what is evil evil is the result of a lack of clear seeing based upon a belief in two powers and limitation of what we call sin is the result of man's struggle to find himself if this be true why could we not at once begin to change our whole life by first changing our thought we could we would not be changing real substance but we would be changing the form that it takes through our thought all that we can change is the form of thought through which experiences come to us what is the limit of man's creative use of mind man is limited by nothing but his own thinking by his mental ability to conceive what is meant by mental conception all things are produced by thought the thing produced from mind is first formed in thought thought molds mind into form but do we not have to act we cannot think without acting 
an inactive body is the result of an inactive mind in using our creative powers how far do we have to consider the conditions under which we live we do not have to consider them at all conditions are the result the effect and not the cause we create them as fast as we think how would a person start to change conditions by first changing thought and realizing that we are not dealing with an illusion but with the great reality then by acting as though we already have what we think how long would it take to do this as long as it would take to let go of all negative thought and embody all positive thought this would depend entirely upon the individual and his mental ability to control thought what would hinder us the most ourselves no one gives to us but ourselves and no one takes from us but ourselves can no one else help us only to a limited degree while we may be helped by those who understand the law for a time yet sooner or later we must ourselves take the creative responsibility of our own lives others may think for us for a few moments a day but we think for ourselves all the time but does not god help us yes god helps all but must do it through law all's love yet all's law how should we pray by giving thanks that we already have that thing that we pray for by completely believing and never doubting when ye pray believe that ye have received and ye shall receive we must be sure that in no way shall we think act or talk or read about limitation we must all be a law unto ourselves definitions god infinite spirit self-knowing mind life truth intelligence love all cause and all effect that invisible power which makes all things out of itself by an inner action of its own thought upon itself the visible universe the ideas of god in expression the body of god expression of the divine mind all visible life is an expression of an inner concept law mind in action law is not cause it is effect it is intelligence operating all law is universal vibration not intelligence but the result of intelligence it follows cause thought the activity of mind man a thinking center in mind creation thought becoming form the immaculate conception sin lack of understanding righteousness spiritual understanding sickness image of thought held in mind appearing on the body health the realization of perfect life poverty limited thought riches the realization of our unity with life which is limitless consciousness the realization of the fact that we are life consciousness of power and activity truth that which is realization an inner thought process whereby we become conscious of our unity with life absolute complete self-knowing causation god spirit life that which is intelligence that which knows that it is unfoldment the birth of ideas coming forth from mind illusion belief in two powers soul the inner creative life the feminine receptive creative sense not an illusion but the faculties through which we contact life in its expression motion the inner activity of life producing manifestation effect the result of inner motion the word the activity of thought faith positive mental activity fear negative mental activity attraction the drawing power of thought unity one mind flowing through all and in all objective life in its outer form subjective life in its inner thought or form karma the law of cause and effect the result of past thought and action binding the ignorant and freeing the wise multiplicity the bringing forth from the one of an infinite variety of form color and motion treatment the mental and spiritual activity of thought for a definite end demonstration 
the result of correct thinking. Heaven, the atmosphere of correct thought. Hell, the atmosphere of false thinking. Peace, mind resting in the realization that it is all. Poise, an inner calm which never fears. Power, the result of the union of peace and poise. End of Part 4 End of Creative Mind by Ernest Shirtliff Holmes